Hey guys, we're here with the winner match of Group G, Hoy versus Lothar. Uh, Hoy's bringing the standard Druid, Shaman, Warlock, Warrior, but he's banning Druid instead of Warrior. What do you think about that, Oskaka? Why is he doing that? Um, I didn't really take that much time to analyze the lineups and stuff, but okay, so Hoy, we're usually, not sure. Hoy usually does his preparation pretty well, so yeah. I, I trust him on that. Yeah, I'm sure he has good reason. And Lothar has Druid, Rogue, Shaman, Warrior, banning Shaman because he has Rogue. Pretty normal yeah. stuff. I think a lot of the G2 guys are banning Shaman. Yeah, and bringing Rogue. Yeah, with Argent Squire, I think. Yeah. At least Tyson, Life Coach. One Argent Squire, one Shiv, one Deadly Poison, no Shadow Strike. Oh, is it no Shadow Strike? Okay. Last I saw, yeah. Yeah. Which, In... I gotta say, I love Shadow Strike. I think it's a great one of. I feel like... You know, if I hadn't seen them playing zero, I would have been closer to playing two than zero. Yeah, I guess it's a case of like you. It feels like Rogue hasn't been performing that well, so like you have to do something different, and then they just tested different stuff and just you know, Arden Squire was the the card that worked out. Mm -hmm. That I wonder how that conversation went that they came to Arden Squire. I think, was, I think it was actually Sifkin and, and JJ who first started playing Arden Squire in their Rogue uh -huh. at Jeremy Valencia and just. I mean, it kind of makes sense against aggro, right? Like, yeah. Rogue never does anything on turn one, so you're always floating that mana. Right. Um, so, and it also enables combos like, right. really well. I mean, one, one mana is like the best, other than the zero mana, it's like the best thing you can do and to it, enable a combo. It combines well with your hero power to finish things off. They can't just value trade into the 1-1 one, one and have an annoying 3-1 up. Your Rogue's always able to right, make right. that and damage that the Argent Squire the does relevant. Synergy, of course. Right, it's ignored, it's threatening. <laughs> okay. You got some... Some juice going on there. Apple, yeah, apple juice. it's good apple juice. <laughs> None for you. I just I just finished mine before this, so no match yet. Um, oh, what do you think? It actually closed here. Wait. Yeah. Uh, so what what do we expect the players to lead with? Do you have any strong feelings about that? I think oh, I, I'm not good at this. Like I always have to think for like five minutes before I decide what I'm leading with. But yeah. even, even then, it's pretty close because it just depends. It's like a mind game. It's a little bit of like rock, paper, scissors. Right. Close. I think it's correct to not always lead with the same class in a scenario like this because then you're too predictable and therefore exploitable. Also, so many of the matchups are so close to 50% that it kind of depends on what your tech cards are, which matchups you kind of want to see and don't want to see. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So but, uh, more so than in old last year's standing formats, it's just very close, difficult decisions for how to order things. Yeah, but even if you do play these like swingy decks that you know you want to like counter his deck with this, like a lot of times what it comes down to for me is that either I'm uh, saving my deck in order to because I needed to beat this deck, but then right. If I'm saving it, then it's right for him to lead with it because then he gets a good matchup right away. So right. then my mind game is like to to start with that deck. But if he doesn't lead with it and I lose, then I don't have a good answer for it anymore. Well, it's just you just can't be predictable in that manner. You have yeah. to kind of you have to mix it up. There's definitely um, like it's it's hard to be wrong. You know, like usually there's one or two choices that are, are you know arguable. Right. And uh, well, know. I think being. Being predictable, consistently doing the same thing in a given spot oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. is is like one of the most wrong things you can do. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, like in a vacuum, it's kind of uh, difficult to call out like one play, one leading one deck as being wrong. Yeah, yeah. So we're completely in agreement on that. Okay. Uh, sometimes you want to lead with something that just has very 50-50 matchups across all three, and that way you don't really care. What they lead with, and yeah, in general, something like Druid is quite safe because Druid and draw Innovator Wild Growth matchups that gravitate towards fifty percent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're all around like forty to sixty because a lot of it, at least like compared to other decks, it depends on more on what the Druid draws than what the other deck is drawing. You know, Innovator and Wild Growth are super powerful cards, so right. you know, it doesn't really matter too much what your opponent is playing if you just have those power turns. Looks like we might be into a game here. And we have Warrior from Hoy against Lothar's Shaman. And the Just Card tells us it's a Control Warrior from Hoy. I haven't seen his previous match. I just casted Lothar's, though. So I know Lothar's lineup, except for I've not seen the Warrior. It was banned oh by Powder. Oh, that's so difficult. Yeah. I need to, like... <laughs> yeah. I guess I can just watch here, actually. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, but it... There's some issues with... All right, so we're keeping Totem Golem. Um, so Lothar's playing Shaman, and, and Hoy's playing... Control Some warrior. sort of control warrior, maybe a Cthulhu warrior. Is Bash, it's being, is Bash being played in Cthulhu warrior? I would say it's more often not, but I think you see a lot more Cthulhu control warriors than non-Cthulhu yeah. control warriors, right? I think I remember 
Hoy playing Kitsune Warrior as well in previous tournaments. Yeah. He likes to include a Deathwing tech, actually. I feel like I was watching Hoy play some Kithun Warrior off, you mm -hmm. know, outside of the tournament just the other day. So, uh, for the mulligans here, I like keeping Ravaging Ghoul against Shaman. I don't have a specific plan for exactly what it's going to do, but it's pretty good. Um, combines well with the Fiery War Axe to kill off a bunch of stuff. If you have Bran ever with it, it's insane. I'm going to be 100% honest, I haven't played a single game of Cthulhu Warrior. I've just, there's just so many Warrior archetypes that I just have to mm -hmm. prioritize and just play either Dragon or now I'm playing OTK well, Warrior. I, I think a lot of people disagree with me about keeping Ravage and Ghoul. I mm -hmm. think I keep it more than other people do, so That's I'm not surprised the, to see Hoy pitch it. I've seen other people argue about it as well. It's definitely like one of the closer calls. Um, I don't how? mind keeping it. They don't run Bloodseeker, right? Uh, in Control Warrior? No. no, no definitely not, right? No. So this turn, if we had a Ravaging Ghoul, we would be very happy to Fiery War Axe that Totem Golem. But, uh -huh. you know, at least we're happy that we have the Fiery War Axe. That's, I think having the Fiery War Axe is much more good for us than having yeah, the yeah, Ravaging I mean, Ghoul. Right? Going into the future turns, you know, we were seeing double Tuscar in the hand, so... I think we have to play the Fiery War Axe, but we don't swing with it. I don't think you can attack, no. Yeah, because we just, just don't have the follow-up to attack. And we do have this Brawl, right? So we can afford to just sit here and, and fall behind on board and then recover with Brawl followed by Weapon Swing exactly. on turn I mean, 5. One, you have the Brawl, but you also have the Shield Block. So actually, playing the Fire War Axe worked out a little bit poorly here now that Lothar has drawn this Tunnel Trog, because now Lothar can seriously consider just not playing the Tunnel Trog. I think you just played anyway. Just played anyways. We're going to turn 3, Tuscar, Totemic, turn 4, Flame Wreath, Faceless. Yeah. And in that sense, actually, he gets rewarded for playing it, right? Because now he can play both the War Axe and the Shield Block. I, I mean, I guess Lothar has to be respecting the Ravaging Ghoul, right? So if you don't play the Tunnel Trog and then Lothar, um, Hoy just hits the Tunnel Golem and clears your board fully, it's, you're in a bad spot already. I don't know if you have to respect Ravaging Ghoul there because he didn't hit. If he had a Ravaging Ghoul in hand, he certainly would have hit the Totem Golem last turn. He certainly oh. he would have to top deck the Ravaging Ghoul. There's no way he has it in hand. Mm. Yeah, he might actually be right about that. So here's Totemic, and the War Axe gets its second good attack. Although, maybe it's tempted to not make that second attack so that you have the War Axe ready to swing after you brawl. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, value-wise it's usually better, but it's also quite a big tell to your opponent that you have the brawl. So it's an obvious Totemic, and the Totemic goes on the left in so, case you spawn a Flame Tongue. So Lothar might hold back on this, definitely the 7-7 seven, seven if you don't attack, but also maybe even the second Tuscar. Ravaging Ghoul. So... We could find uh, Revenge with Ravaging Ghoul in a future turn. Uh, we could swing at the Totem Golem and Ravaging Ghoul, or we could just Armor Pass and just Brawl next turn. Number of options here for Hoy. Actually, My first thought is we just pass. Yeah, I, can I mean, see it, that as the well. one issue with passing is that it completely telegraphs the Brawl. It's like when you don't hit that Tuscar Totemic with your Fiery War X. It pretty much just tells Lothar, hey, Brawl's coming, what about play you, around it as much as possible. What about you armor up and you just pass really fast so that you just don't have anything to think about, you know? T trying to tell him that you just don't even have a play in your hand. Uh, and that's why you're passing. No, I mean, no, I guess, I mean I if you, you don't have hit, a play in your hand, you're just hitting that Tuscar yeah, Totemic. Yeah, you would hit the Tuscar for sure. The only way you're not swinging with the Fiery War Axe is if you're, if you're brawling next turn. So it's, it's quite a decision. And the, and the potential to revenge Ravaging Ghoul those sort of plays really complicates things. Lothar doesn't have an amazing play to like play around Brawl really. I mean, he can't even play the Doom Memory yet, so... Yeah, I mean, his play around Brawl might be just attack for six paths, no totem, play nothing. Yeah. Which is pretty weak. And, I mean, going forward, you know, as soon as Hoy draws his Cthulhu Activator for the Shield Bearer, he has Justicar in hand as well, like... Lothar kind of needs to start putting some pressure on him, right? Mm -hmm. So this is an unfortunate draw for Lothar. The Lightning Storm is unlikely to see good targets. Uh, often you save it for Twin Emperors, mm -hmm. and until then it's it's difficult to accomplish much with it. Um, well, that's, that's a bit, I'm a little bit surprised about the inclusion of Lightning Storm. Um, I was I was already, like, uh, I mean, before I switched out my Shaman for Freeze Mage, I was actually considering playing no Lightning Storm, even though I was banning Warrior. But mm -hmm. Lothar's actually leaving Warrior up and banning Shaman. Um, which would make like you know less sense for the lightning storm. I thought it was already close, but um. I thought the lightning storm was like very clearly correct like a week or two ago when you were banning warrior um, when it was less expected. Ban warrior and zoo is quite common, right? Yeah, but now that we're banning shaman, that makes the lightning storm worse. We're leaving warrior up, that makes the lightning storm worse. Also, yeah. it's just much more expected to see lightning storm even in these aggro shamans, and that also makes the lightning yeah. storm worse. However, I do have to say that uh, 
the recent, you know, rise in Yogg Druid is a big reason to run like Lightning Storm because of Vile Teacher. Oof, we high rolled, got a Flame Tongue. I mean, it's fairly 50 50, right? We played two Totemics, got one good one, one bad one. It's only very slightly above average overall. Mm -hmm. And you can argue the first one was more important. So we played Totemic and Argent Squire. Really didn't show much respect for Brawl. Um, I liked Hoy's play last turn. It. It didn't represent the Brawl. It made a play that set up well for a Ravaging Ghoul if uh, Lothar didn't do anything. And if he did a lot, as is the case, then it set up well, then we can Brawl. We don't have the Weapon Swing after Brawl, but, I mean, we're Brawling three cards, four if you can't. It's probably four cards. Although the Argent Squire is such a low quality. All right, not a bad one to have to win the Brawl, since it's not a bad one for Hoy to have win the Brawl because it dies to Ravaging Ghoul. And this turn... Between Doomhammer and Flame Wreath Faceless. I think that just because of the mana, you just have to play the Doomhammer. But yeah, because you can Flame Wreath Faceless next turn. If you Flame Wreath Faceless this turn, exactly. you cannot Doomhammer next turn. In general, though, I, I would definitely like lean towards development over like developing direct them or like you know burning face. Right, you especially against Control Warrior. But just because of the mana, it's just it's so bad to play the Flame Wreath this turn. Yeah. I'm missing out on eight damage from the Doomhammer, and you know potentially not even you know having an awkward turn in the future. So as much as I like getting just car in line, it just doesn't seem like a thing here. Is our Cthulhu still at six? We haven't played any enablers, right? Um, I believe not. Yeah. So I guess we Ravage and Ghoul and gain two. Go to 17. We're taking four from the Doomhammer down to 13. The Rockbiter means seven damage off lethal, which is more than one card draw away. So it's not going to end this turn with my expected line of Ravage and Ghoul armor up. Using the Ravaging Ghoul does feel a little bit bad for Hoy here because it's our last good activator for Execute. Um, yeah, if he does play the 7-7 the seven, seven, though, then it's very unlikely that Lothar would double hit the Ravaging Ghoul as opposed to like just going face and then you, you know, the worst case is that you just trade in your Ravaging Ghoul and execute it. Yeah, which is fine. Yeah, so if you go Ravaging Ghoul, armor up, uh, next turn, Lothar plays Flame Wreath Faceless and goes face for 4 with the... Uh, he doesn't necessarily go face for four. He could trade twice. <sighs> Does the Doomhammer make him want to trade because he wants the game to go longer? No, he's just going face. He's seeing blood. I mean, one thing about trading is it, it looks dumb. Um, it looks dumb considering the Lightning Storm in our hand. And also, we don't know that the opponent is out of Execute Activators. We don't know that Ravaging Ghoul is his last uh, one. Uh, just considering the fact that you can just have lethal next turn with the Lava Burst draw. Yeah. You know, despite of what he does this turn, other than, you know, some massive shield block turn. Right. Shardy is one of... So yeah, he's drawing to two Lava Bursts and a Rock Biter. So that's at least three outs for lethal. But this this turn looks like a pretty autopilot Justicar execute, I'd say. I mean, maybe you could Acolyte Armor up instead of the Justicar, but I don't think that makes sense. It feels really bad to play the Acolyte. It just feels like, you know... If, yeah, because like you don't want to draw cards, you have plenty of stuff. What you want to do is be gaining four a turn as soon as yeah, possible. Exactly. You're gaining That's two a turn. You and he's hitting you for four each turn with the memory. Yeah. But he's gonna take his time. Think and unfortunately, he can't even like fish for just the one activator. For he's, he hasn't had a single one yet, so he needs two of them in order to activate the, the shield bear. So I definitely feel like Warrior's favorite here. Um, you the Warrior's favorite. Yeah, you think Shaman's favorite at the spot? I think he's just like one or two burn spells away from winning, right? Yeah. He is, but most of his deck is not those burn spells. Oh, he's going for the Acolyte armor up. Okay, well. There we go. It's the, it's the one <laughs> Not favored spell. with that draw. <laughs> I mean, there were three in, uh, what, 19, 3 and 20? So it was 15% to be lethal that turn, but there's a lot of ways you can win with the other 85%. Right, right, right. I mean,. Boy's next turn was not amazing either. Yeah. Probably just car armor. And then you're in the same spot with the same outs. I guess... Um, no, actually, then if you draw like a thing from below or the second flame weight, then you just have you know more development and more... Yeah, no, you're right. Was Shaman no, was, was no certainly favored there. In, uh, it's not just that he's 15% to draw lethal. The thing is, Hoy is pretty far off from making progress because his Cthune's still at 6. So he has a lot of big, dumb, slow cards that just are not going to protect him. Yeah. So he's pretty far off from stabilizing. Okay, so that's a win for Shaman. Hoist Warriors out of the way. To beat Shaman, probably Zoo rather than Druid. Nope. Nope. Okay. 
Uh, I guess Hoi could be playing not oh, Zoo, no, no, but Hoi, Reno Lock, Hoi, Hoi right? Never plays, so he, yeah, he, he plays, plays Reno Lock, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah, why that's... he left Warrior up and banned Druid, because he has the Reno Lock to yeah. beat the Warrior. Absolutely. So, of course, he keeps Druid. It all makes sense. Now, that was probably that, not that, a good that keep. That was actually a very, very important matchup for the entire series, like the the Warrior losing to the Shaman, because Hoi's decks are not good against Shaman, and, you know, Warrior was kind of supposed to win that. Mm -hmm. He had um, the Revenge in there. That's probably a good card in the matchup. Even more so, you know, the Cocoon Warrior from Hoi is not, like, easily counterable by Lothar either. Right. Um, Rogue's probably a favorite against it, but not a not a large one. Yeah, I think the Cthulhu Warrior with uh, you know double shield bear can be quite scary for the Rogue, but I would say you know it leans it's somewhat close to fifty percent. Right now, Hoy Mulligan the Nourish, which you can maybe consider keeping when you have an Innervate, since getting two mana crystals two turns sooner is reasonable. But I guess that's not really what you want against Shaman. You think? Yeah, it's just because of the matchup, you know, and a lot of other matchups you would, but probably not against Shaman. So both players skip turn one, which um, in a lot of matchups feels really bad. In this matchup, it's probably fine. I mean, the Shaman certainly wants to hit his turn one, but... It feels bad to not have a play, but I have to say that Lothar has two of the most important cards in the matchup. Flame Wreath Faceless. Druid has, Yogg Druid has one answer to that, and it's the Mulch. Yeah. Uh, one efficient answer, I should say. Um, you know, there's some swipe. Ways to do things, but wrath or, you know. just the one that doesn't stink. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Mr. Yagut, I've been talking to, and he's a big proponent of double Mulch. And that's, Flamery right. Faceless is certainly one of the reasons why. Uh -huh. But also just everyone knows the weakness of Druid is you, you play some big dumb idiot and they don't have an answer for it. They have just the one Mulch. When you have two Mulches... It's, it's very quite, different. Uh, effective against Dragon Warrior as well, to have too much. Yeah. It's good to survive against Van Cleef. <laughs> so uh, the double so mulch I'd is good against Druid. Definitely see a Rock Rider this turn, right? Uh, getting out that 7-7 that seven, seven against Druid is super, super powerful. And, but, you know, if you go for any other play, you're... I mean, I guess a Totem would just, you know, leave it vulnerable, just swipe. And right. Any other play would delay the set, you know, the development of the four mana card. Yeah. Apologize, by the way, for my voice. I'm I have a little bit of a cold right now. Ooh, unlucky. So, how do you like Innervate Azure Drake? Curving into Mire Keeper next turn. I like it a lot. It actually sets up the deal with the seven seven pretty cleanly. Yeah, exactly. And then Lothar does not have a good Wrath Living Roots. So we just get two for one, but we're spending three mana to his six. So the fact that we're oh, falling that behind by a card is uh, very that worth. Is definitely worth it. It's like we're getting three mana for that one card, which is better than Innervate by yeah. a massive amount. And you know, you could you would definitely say that this is a, a tempo matchup more than anything. Yeah. So is there some alternative play? Um, no. Roll exactly spell power. Totem. Yeah, I don't think that's a. <laughs> I don't think totaming. I mean, it it does feel quite bad to play the flame wreath because you don't have a good turn next turn. But the, all the other options are just so weak. I mean, for yeah. maybe trust card is Tamek. Well, if you draw any one or two drop, you can, you know, spend all your mana next turn. I think sure. it kind of was the plan. You have to go for it. Yeah, I, I agree with this. It feels bad with the Azurdic on board. Um, but I don't. Def I definitely don't criticize Lothar's like, game plan going into this because the Innervate Azurdic is not likely at all. All right, so we're going to Wrath Living Roots to clear it, but I think we don't Raven Idol because we might want to teach her Raven Idol next turn. What do you think? Yeah, exactly. Um, so we just clear it and push four face damage, move on with our life. I mean, looking at our hand, you know, we're not, you know, we're not playing a five mana card next turn, so just getting extra token. Um, I guess you would discover a spell every time and they could maybe get mulch, but... Well, you could maybe hit I, a I, one mana spell and then you could play the one mana spell with Violet Teacher next turn. But what's your one mana spell that's better than Raven? I yeah, play exactly. next turn. Well, the second pick another Raven. I don't know. I think Living Roots is the answer. Um, Living Roots would be better because it's potentially killing his two drop next turn. Right. Um, our spell only... damage is sticking around, so it kills uh, Tunnel Trog or whatever. He is actually given the option of Raven Idol, so <laughs> I mean that could be or, or, or the okay. I, I mean Naturalize seems quite bad in this position because, like with a Vile Teacher, you can sort of have this long game where you just trade out for all of his stuff. And naturalized definitely we doesn't care help about giving him those cards, yeah. Shaman does have a number of really high tempo cards, so giving them a lot of cards could be Lightning Storm, Hex. Scary. You know, Rock Biters with Doom Hammer, for example. Oh yeah. One mana six damage. Yeah, Fireball's 
overpowered at four mana six damage. What's one mana six damage? Exactly. Disgusting. So, DJ Raven Idol seems good. Um, I mean, I guess Agro Shaman developing this Ancient of War seems extremely powerful, right? Like, there's no hex. So you're thinking about getting a mana and, crystal? And I would, yeah, I think I would lean towards uh, just getting the Ancient of War down as soon as possible. You already have seven power on board, um, so it's likely that he won't have much to contest it. I think with us being at 30, I'm not scared of dying anytime soon, so I feel like I don't necessarily... like. I agree that your line of play is extremely powerful and wins the game. I think this one... I, it's really tough for me to say which one wins better. This is the one that appeals to my intuition more, is what I would say. Okay. Yeah, it's like a... They both seem very winning. Exactly. It's it's kind of hard to pick when you have two lines that are both, you know... Like, how do you lose? Yeah, exactly. Like, the only way you can say one is better than the other is if you find a way that one of them actually loses the game, yeah. which... I mean, uh, we're a little bit too far away to, like, really come that down to that scenario. It's not 100% like, over. You know, sometimes when you're down to fatigue, there just is no misplay at all because everything is just a winning line. Yeah. So here, five mana to spend, and a lot of things that we can't really deal with. We're going to want to think about setting up to recover the game with Lightning Storm, so maybe we Doomhammer this turn and attack Doom in such a way that sets up the Lightning Storm the board away. <laughs> hit the Drake once, hit the Teacher once. <laughs> <laughs> Just take 14. Yeah, what's 14? 15 even. I don't know. It's a lot, man. We're taking 7 plus 8 is 15. That's okay. a losing line, I think, if you... Yeah. So you want to just uh, like make a 7-7 seven, seven and... Mm, that feels bad, too. It definitely. I mean, looking at exactly Hoy's hand, it, it you know it looks quite good for the 7-7, seven, seven, but... I mean, Lothar has to be scared about other things coming out, like Wrath or Swipe. Feral Spirit's Flame Tongue. Yeah, this is a thing I was looking at that, that makes some sense. Probably the Flame Tongue dies, but it def if it doesn't, then the Feral Spirits do a lot of damage. And if the Feral Spirits do a little damage, it still does an okay job of setting up for Lightning Storm, Lightning Bolt next turn. So, 8 mana is available. I'm just going to Nourish and Believe. That's actually... I mean, it's like the most powerful play, but it's a little bit risky. Because you could kind of have a bad turn here. Yeah. Which is what he ended is, up happening. You know, punished for this play, but, you know, for example, Power of the Wild would be extremely powerful. Yeah. Wrath would be really strong. Interesting. So we trade the teacher and Drake into the spirits and put one damage on his flame tongue. Yeah, there shouldn't be too much too much else to consider. Yeah. Perhaps Well, it looks like uh, um Lothar might have found the line that, you know, gets him back into this game. Yeah, I mean he definitely I mean, I would say he took a little bit of a risk, you know, because any removal spell on the Flame Tongue would really be favorable trades. I mean, it does actually set up for Lightning Storm, even if he runs an Azure Drake into a 2-3. two, into a two three. But yeah. um, Poi definitely a, a really, really low tempo turn here and actually not picking up, like, any removal or any buffs. There's nothing he could play. All right. So... We would have loved to have seen a Tunnel Truck here. Tunnel Truck Lightning Storm would have been the play by a mile. As is, maybe we don't Lightning Storm. What if we just, uh, like, Tuscar Totemic and Lightning Bolt? Mm. <laughs> it, it leaves our Flame Tongue out to die. Not a big fan. You probably like Lightning Storm, clear the board, and just abusive two face damage so that we develop a 4-1. Exactly, I and mean, you still have... Next turn we have 5 mana, which is options to Doomhammer or uh, Flamey Faces plus Lightning Bolt. Exactly, yeah. Nope. Oh, he does actually go for the Tuscar. Alright, let's high roll. Flame Tongue. Woo! That's pretty good. It's very good. So now our Flame Tongue actively trades with this one once instead of just dying to it. Yeah, and perhaps Lothar is, you know, thinking that... Uh, well, was I that mean, best? He, was that better uh, than a Totem Golem or a Mana Tide here? It's got to be better than Mana Tide. We're not as interested in cards as Tempo, I think. Um, I think it's better than Totem Golem, but I'm not sure. Mm. Looking at our hand, it I doesn't think, I don't think the flame that well. seems that amazing. But definitely being able to hit and, and kill one of the... Well, it sort of kills two one ones while leaving a Flame Tongue behind. Right, exactly. Like, is Totem Golem really better than that? Yeah, perhaps not. And, and because of Hoy's earlier turns, that's maybe a reason why he wanted to save Lightning Storm. You, know, uh, you could go something like Innervate Anixia here, or you know, some powerful Vile Teacher turn. Mm -hmm. 
and he's actually, you know, sort of clawed his way back into this game that he doesn't need to take, you know, uh, this, you know, sort of, you know, early route with removal, you know, lightning storming. He can maybe afford to wait on it a little bit. This is actually kind of one of the cool things about Hearthstone right now is a few minutes ago we were talking about, like, Hoy never losing this game. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden he's, like, <laughs> behind, question mark? Yeah, There's really that came Anixia down to that, that, that could get lightning storm pretty hard. It really came down to that nurse turn from Hoy where he drew three cards, he didn't pick up anything to play, and yeah, that's just all he did. He didn't develop anything. Yeah, he had six mana and spent zero of it impacting the board. And he had to run in his Azure Drake into a 4-3 Feral yeah, Spirit, and it's just, just disaster. Lothar took a risk in a, in a bad spot and got rewarded for it. He's actually running double Lightning Storm in this deck. Okay. So perhaps cutting like a, a one Flame Dragler and a Horse Arch Rider. Horse Rider, yeah. That's the common decision. So, um, I'm going to trade into that Fandral, make a 9-7 and a Totem. What do you think? Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, he is at 30 HP, so, uh, the Druid is at 30 HP, so it's not quite, you know, good enough of a spot to just jam Doom Hammer and start hitting face. You need to, you know, go for a little bit of board control. We're going to be here for a while, yeah. But I, I do think that now with Hoi having so many cards in hand and, and Hoi not really picking up, you know, like really any burst to speak of, uh, sorry, Lothar not picking up any burst, that, uh, you know, a card like, I mean, I guess Anixia is weak to Langstorm, but in general, you know, Hoi has so many super powerful minions to develop hmm. that you could just outvalue the shaman with enough life i feel like i missed something here there's an arjun horse rider and a keeper of the grove and a moonfire oh um raven oh right okay with fandral okay hmm. so it's a lot of cards but Seven seven is tough for a druid to deal with. We could silence the flame tongue, but there's still seven coming. But maybe we can afford to take seven if we just uh, silence the flame tongue and make a emperor, for instance. Um, he can actually clear the the flame wreath and yeah, was kill the tongue fire. with hero power. All right, seems good. That's got to be better than what I was talking and about. And now you know. Poise had a very healthy life total and has cleared both Flame Wreath Facelesses off, off of Lothar. And, you know, really, like, he needs something like Thing from Below here to, you know, amount any sort of board control. Well, I think I'm going to Doomhammer that Keeper of the Grove to protect my Flame Tongue. And right, right. probably develop the Abusive, even though it gives some hero power value. The guy has seven cards in hand. Like, he doesn't like hero powering that much, and I like developing a 4 1. Um, just to yeah, know, give him a I mean, problem to deal with on his turn. As but I said, I mean, Lothar, he doesn't have much left in terms of minions, so yeah. he kind of has to like push all the damage that he can right now. Um, I don't really think that it'll be enough, especially with the Ancient of War in Hoy's hand. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna, looks like uh, Hoy's going to win this game after all. Yeah, exactly. Even with the weak tempo turn, he uh, yeah. has enough tools to survive Lothar's offense. I mean, in fact, he's ahead on life total. <laughs> yeah. It's a uh, the Doom Hammer. I think is an easy decision. Oh, uh, he disagrees. He's going for the really long game. Okay. I actually thought he was gonna like Lightning Storm. Because if he didn't roll exactly the Taunt Totem, the Taunt Totem was a good choice <laughs> exactly. there, right? Yeah. <laughs> sometimes, you, sometimes when you're behind, you have to take risks. We've seen Lothar do it twice now this game and been rewarded twice. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it is true that when you're, you know, this far behind, you just kind of have to... You can't really go for the, the standard line. Yeah, there's no... It's, it's just the safe play losing. loses safely. But it's also like not like some insane reward. <laughs> there's not much payoff for rolling the taunt on him. Yeah. He's still probably just get he punished He might just be in a spot where he just cannot win the game no matter what happens. Yeah. But he doesn't know that. He's got to sit there and, and give himself the best chance he can find. But it is also last year's setting, and there's no reason for him to not find out as much about Hoy's deck as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not it's not like Conquest, where once they win with it, you don't care. It's the opposite. Right, I mean, it's, yeah, it's the opposite. You don't want to show him that you have Lightning Storms in your deck. Okay, so 
Lightning Storm's good here. No spell damage totem. Wrath of Air totem, I guess it's called. Yeah. And he's actually still not developing the Doomhammer. Someday, Doomhammer, someday. Alright, we high rolled. That's good. Lothar is so far away from bursting Hoy down that he keeps making these value plays. Oh, and Ixia right after the Lightning Storm. Yeah. Walking right into that second Lightning Storm. Which, Rock Fighter... Yeah, the I mean, second Lightning Storm, even the, like, yeah, as we said before, Hoy's just in such a good spot that the, even the second Lightning Storm doesn't really matter in terms of the outcome of the game here. Yeah, and the Rock Fighter with Doomhammer also probably doesn't matter. What he needed here was something like a... If he drew... Let's see. I just can't think of anything. I was thinking, okay, so he goes Storm and Hex and... Uh, and draw Deathwing next turn. Right third now. Flame Wreath Faceless. Or, or but he Death doesn't Wing. have mana for that. Oh. And he doesn't draw that many cards. So like Ancestral into Lightning Storm, Lava Shock, maybe. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I just start thinking about magic. You just go like Ancestral Recall, Black Lotus, Time Walk. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that magic, I, I've never played. <laughs> okay, yeah. Those are just a bunch of old cards that should never have been printed and do very okay. unfair things. Time Walk is two mana, take an extra turn. So that one's oh. pretty good. Oh, sounds, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the least broken of the three cards. Good. <laughs> the other two are better. Okay. I sometimes wish we could go like, we could have some tournament format where you could like unnerf a card in Hearthstone, like Ooh. bring it back to the original state. You know, yeah. you get to play patron, old patron. You get to play. You that's know. a different sort of time walk. But time like each player only gets to unnerf one card each, so they okay. can like choose and, and you know build their lineup around that. Would it be a wild format instead of a standard format? Yeah. I guess, yeah, I guess you would play wild. Yep, so that's that's where this game's at. We're talking about different think, formats uh, and different games. Yeah, I, I would think that I would pick Warsong Commander, and it's not the Warsong Commander you think of, because that one was actually already nerfed once. Okay, uh, which one is it? The, the, the first Warsong Commander gave all of your minions charge, no matter what. <laughs> oh, and, I actually and remember And the deck this. was literally Molten, molten Giant giants. Brewmaster, and you just... Yeah. Yeah. I, I saw that, and I was like, this is amazing. I think I but I was like, at that time, I was so casual, I didn't have any cards, I was like, not even close to doing yeah. that. I think I would just pick that card, yeah. Yeah, that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty broken. All right. Lothar scoops it up. That's definitely a magic phrase, scooping it up. You'd physically scoop up your cards when you lost. Yeah, yeah. I've just heard other people use it, so... Yeah, yeah. I think you just say scoop. Yeah. Just scoop, yeah. Um, so now, looking at the rest of the uh, the matchups, I mean, as we said before, Druid is kind of... It can just kind of beat anything, so it's, like, mm -hmm. it's hard to say exactly what... Uh, you know, how the matchups will pan out. But he has uh, Rogue or Warrior are his options. But Rogue is actually one of... I, I, I really imagine nice. what Rogue's one of the better decks against Druid right now. Yeah, I think so. You know, just the, the sheer power of Auctioneer and Conceal. Um, as well as Van Cleef that goes unanswered. Mm -hmm. Might just be too much for Druid to deal with. Even though Yogg Druid has a lot of removal, now, this they is just interesting. cannot interact uh, with stealth minions. Auctioneer can seal Sap. Three cards that we mentioned as being key for the matchup, but do you keep them off the mulligan because they're not really early game plays? I would tend to not keep Sap. Right. Um, would you keep Auctioneer Conceal? I imagine I would keep the Auctioneer, but the Conceal is maybe a little bit Greedy, considering you know you're until like turn seven, you're just you could have just had another card, or you could have drawn into the conceal later in the game. Right. And and conceal. I mean, well, I said it's really auctioneer powerful against without druid. conceal can be good. Conceal without auctioneer is exactly for sure. against druid. Uh, I I said that conceal is really powerful, but auctioneer in general, even without conceal, is also powerful because it hinders the the development of druid. They have to you know invest a swipe or something like that. Right. And also, you can only keep so many of the later game cards. Like the more you keep, the worse your earlier turns are. And right. The more it's just, I mean, it's is. also. You know, so far into the game, it's just likely that you'll draw it in into it anyway. So Lothar actually agrees with our uh, thoughts there. Well, with your thoughts, I w my first thought was the Mulligan the Gadget, but I haven't played any oh, okay. Rogue in forever. Oh, you would so. actually Mulligan the Gadget. Well, I shouldn't listen to me on this because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so uh, Hoy has a nice hand with Innervate and Wild Growth, and the yes. rest of the hand's not currently good, but you know, if he has Innervate and Wild Growth, you've got to feel good. But Lothar picks up the Van Cleef, so both players are feeling really powerful, I would say. I mean,. I guess Lothar doesn't quite have a curve. He doesn't really have a turn three play here. But turn four, Violet Teacher. He's going to have Gadget double prep. Wow. Yeah. Preparation is definitely a good card with, with Auctioneer. Yeah. It's good with Teacher, too. It's sure. just good in general. Yeah. Good with Van Cleef. 
I like uh, Thalnos and no attack. Yep, I agree. I like playing the Vile Teacher next turn, so. Yeah. Yeah, you can't uh, attack because you're playing Violet Teacher next turn, you're not redaggering. And with so many extra card, you know, draws, you could potentially draw Tomb Pillager or Azurek, and you just never have time to redagger mm -hmm. before the auction your turn where you want to Deadly Poison and so on. So, what to do about this? You could just Teacher, Innervate Wrath for one. It's definitely a little bit scary to leave up the, the Thalnos, right? Yeah, because of uh, just... Eviscerate. Eviscerate just backstab actually already clears it. So oh, yeah. Develop a Tomb Pillager and backstab. That would be much clear. stronger, yeah. And he chooses to cycle the Wrath, which makes sense. I mean, in general, I would keep Wrath against Rogue because it's very powerful. But um, he has a second and he has But swipe. because he has literally zero minions to be played in his hand and, you know, swipe and a second Wrath makes a lot of sense. And there's the backstab. It would have been quite a punish to go something like backstab, trade Thalnos, weapon hit, and Van Cleef. And instead, we have awkwardness. Actually, he wouldn't have drawn thought. the backstab, right? He would have Because he drew it off the Thalmus. It was off the Thalmus. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. So what does Lothar do here? This is a tough spot, right? It's... We have these preps, but there's nothing to play off of them. The Vile Teacher is definitely Very scary threatening. going up we against We don't have Fana Knives. We don't have... With, you know, I don't, I don't know if Hoy plays Soul of the Forest, but at least you know, Power of the Wild is very scary. Soul of the Forest is pretty but, uncommon. I would expect know, nobody but Jackie Chan to have that. I and actually run it. Oh yeah, <laughs> in my druid. Uh, okay. Maybe just because of lack of testing, but uh, you know, I also know that a lot of other people are playing in it. It actually won me a few games. So. Yeah. I mean, I like it. I also like the aspect of the. the Deck being more combo oriented against like other decks, you know, you keep Vile Teacher until you have either Emperor or Innervate, and then you just set up. It's like a win condition, pretty much. Yeah, you just Vile Teacher. It's like and you very get difficult to beat. Soul of the Forest board. Yeah, the Vile um, Teacher Power of the Wild boards are pretty easy to clear. Soul of the Forest makes it just exactly. dramatically more impossible. All of a sudden, Brawl is just like not an answer. The downside of Soul of the Forest, of course, being completely dead in certain cases. Yeah, like if they're um, attacking your face and right. you have no mate board. And Lothar decided here to backstab the Vile Teacher, which makes sense. Uh, really, the turn just came down to either backstabbing a 1-1 one -one or uh, backstabbing the Vile Teacher, and it sets up for this trade here, which is, I guess it's unlikely to happen, but yeah, now just, just a Deadly Poison would uh, clear it. Or even an SI7 agent with the hero power. So, as Hoy here, we're, we're going to swipe that Teacher and trade the 1-1 one -one in... Is there any chance we're like coining wild growth because it's making one ones while ramping towards these big things, or do we want to? No I mean, the advantage to coining wild oh, is completely different. Oh, he's keeping the swipe. Might wrath for one then coin swipe. Oh no, no, okay, no, no. Yeah, yeah, no, no. This makes sense to cycle the card because he's playing a lot of spells to get that. I mean, considering what he's already drawn and what he has in his hand, it's very likely that the card you draw is going to be a pretty good one to to play next turn. Right. And if he doesn't do it, then, you know, chance, I mean, there's an increased chance that he would just have nothing to do next turn, and you really need to pressure Rogue before this, you know, Auctioneer turn and so on. So Auctioneer's a pretty unlucky draw uh, for Lothar. He already has an sure. Auctioneer. What he needs is Huge, huge diminishing returns on, on Auctioneer. Another reason to actually bump, uh, sorry, backstab the teacher last turn was because he has Azdrake now, so he could draw into Fanonize and actually clear mm -hmm. what they hear part. That would have been a ridiculous turn. Wow, that dagger hit feels bad. It makes a lot of sense because now there aren't four one ones to trade into the Azure Drake. Yep, yep. And a second swipe. So we could do something like swipe wild growth. Spawning two one ones, you'd have eight mana next turn. Yeah, the, the, you definitely just drake you know, something into an. Generally, the wild growth isn't that relevant, but uh, you know, at this stage of the game, but you know, looking at his hand, you definitely want to. Yeah, with the Anixia and the Yard, that's not very correct. Save right? it for for turn ten now. Yeah. And the great thing about this is, not only do we already know Lothar doesn't have a Phantom Knives, we know even if he draws one, we have the Anixia to reload again. So he's going to have to draw, like, runner Phantom Knives to, Into SI to figure this out. <laughs> Gadget Prep of this seems like the play here. And then just draw into Prep Fan. Right, yeah. That would be sick. So now he played the gadget that he drew recently. He still has that gadget kept off the mold, in which Hoy could be tracking. And uh, how would you read that? I mean... 100% I would say that you pretty much just know that this is an auctioneer, right? If 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 you keep track of it, which I guess maybe not that likely. I don't exactly know how well Hoy reads into stuff like this. But Hoy's pretty sharp. 
I wouldn't be surprised. He if he yeah, yeah, he definitely is. But uh, I know it's that even though the track, you know, a lot of times, of size a lot of times, I, you know, almost always I do it on ladder, for example. But sometimes the tournament is distracted, or you know. Interesting. Ideally, it would be the other way, right? On ladder, yeah, who yeah, cares? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always choke in tournaments, even though. Oh, I see. Well, yeah, yeah I understand that. I too have made mistakes. Shadow Strike. If it's raining the face here. Perhaps just desperately not really looking for fan and I have question mark? I don't know. I guess he just needs to draw the fan anyway, and you know. He wanted to draw a card off the Abyss, so. Yeah, it, it doesn't I guess make I, it. I think he just went for the prep because he figures if I don't hit the fan and Ives now, it's yeah, like, yeah, all no, right, no, you the got prep me. definitely makes sense. And then once you've done the prep, you, know, you might as well eviscerate. Right. Seems a little bit weird, but uh, you know, eviscerating a one one also doesn't seem that good. So. Yeah, I don't like eviscerating a one one because your whole plan is to draw fan and Ives or, or give up. Exactly. And in this case, mostly give up. Yeah, I guess that's more about like your HP mattering a lot more than your opponent's at this point. But I see. But yeah, it could just Sometimes be that you need you to draw fan, otherwise one. you just can't. Oh, or this card. Or just the, the sick G2 oh, tech. That Azure Drake's still there. We're going to sap the Azure Drake. And Skulker, that feels... I mean, it clears the board. Good chance you have to do it. So many options. Oh, that feels bad. Saving it does feel bad, but you also saw this wild growth from Hoy that would sort of indicate him having, you know, scenarios, Anixia, Yogg-Saron, cards like that. So maybe the Azure isn't even like that powerful. It's just a dagger up, and you know, I don't really blame him for this because the sap is also powerful against, you know, Ancient of War. And even the Anixia, he just doesn't have an answer to Anixia, right? Yeah, but taking well, another four from okay, this never mind. Sap, never mind. Never mind. Never mind on the sap Anixia comment. So, that was is Fandal yeah. Raven Idol better than Anixia? You I, could trade Anixia, you could go face Anixia. I, I believe you just... Go face Anixia. Yeah. Yeah, that's oh, oh, you could trade, actually. I think trading's a little bit silly with him being at 11. I guess trading could play around a... Sh no, there's no way Lothar's playing Shadow Step. We know this list well enough to think he's not on spicy stuff. <laughs> the and, spicy uh, Shadow Step? Yeah, no. Going face is so good when he's at 11. Like, Rogue can't heal or taunt, so just Druid can draw into burn. Mm -hmm. Yep, I like this play from Hoy. And while the Fandral Raven Idol is strong last turn, it'll be strong next turn too, and potentially stronger. You draw into more Wraths and whatever. This is just, you know, the play to kill him right away. Which is right. And this, I have to say, this is another very, very pivotal matchup in the, you know, in the terms of who's actually winning the series, because this was... Kind of what Lothar just needed to beat. Well, I guess not needed, but, you know, he was really hoping that the rogue would beat this uh, druid here. This happens a lot in last year's standing. The first match is very important, but also if you can beat one of their counter decks, that also... Exactly. That's just um, how it works. Like, you need to either win the first game or, like, you know... Or win a bad matchup. Or win a bad matchup. Or if your opponent wins the first match, you need to win, like, yeah, whatever. So it's kind of painful to watch these last few turns of Lothar sitting there struggling when we know right. it's just how doomed he is, but hey. I mean, do you Fandral before it, or I guess you would Raven Idol first and then Azure Drake? Or do you Fandral Raven Idol? Because, I mean, there's so many that kill, but it's not that many. I like Fandral Raven Idol. Uh, I think there's a fair number of minions I mean, that perhaps kill if here. You, like one damage from a minion. You could summer. argue that perhaps if you don't find it, then you just win anyway. And there's no... No way for him to lethal you anyways. Now, when you Fandral Rave Idol, now the spell can't be Starfire this turn anymore. You don't have mana for it. Right. Can't be Wisps of the Old Gods either. Okay. <laughs> so we do miss some outs as well. All right, Moonfire is... Next game. Yeah. Moonfire's a little flashier, though. What do you think? Misplay? Not picking the Moonfire? Yeah. Uh... I would say I mean, I guess this is the more flashy, flashy one. In different ways. You know, get the Fandral synergy. Okay, yeah, maybe flashy is the wrong word for what I was trying to say. You're right. Power of the World is flashier. Moonfire is more. I think that there's just kind of different levels to it, you know? Like like the average Twitch viewer would think that this is more flashy, but for us, like, that's the obvious flashy, so, you know, the new flashy becomes the 
the non flesh you play. I mean, it just feels lo- worse to lose to a Moonfire than almost anything else, oh. right? You mean like for the, the tilt factor, maybe? Yeah, yeah. It's not enough that I win. It's also he has to really lose as yeah, much yeah. as possible. It's like, yeah, of course he, of course he hit the Moonfire. <laughs> of course he had exactly oh, the awesome. Lothar oh, is this playing is the this OTK combo warrior. warrior. Which you brought as well, right, Oskaka? Yeah, I am actually playing this deck. It's uh... I played some games with this deck on ladder, and it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. It felt a little bit like the old patron. Definitely, definitely. Like I've been sort of missing this combo deck, you know. Yes. Since, you know, since patron got nerfed, you just had this, you know, combo decks. Like a lot of them are just, you just, every game is just so different. You just have to like, you know, you have to think so far ahead in in, in certain turns, and it, you know, it just feels kind of cool a lot of the time when you're making these like unorthodox plays. Power of the world for pressure. Let's go. Sometimes, even with the Violet Teacher in hand, he just wants that 3-2 to start getting to work for him. He really believes there's no Fiery War Axe, and he is rewarded for taking that risk. I think Lothar kept two cards off the Mulligan as well. So the chance of there being a Fiery War Axe was very high. What did he keep? I think he kept Acolyte Taskmaster. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, keeping... Power of the Wild for Vile Teacher, I mean, it is quite greedy since it's so far in the future, yeah, but, but even more so, like, I mean, you see you you see, you see what's in this de in this deck of Lothar, right? Like, Wild Power Master, yeah. two spells, the entire board is wiped anyway, so there's not a lot of value in... Yeah, the Teacher Power of the Wild Buffing Synergy your... is just pretty irrelevant in this matchup, or pretty low yeah. importance in this matchup. Unless you run Soul of the Forest. There's the win, X. Better yeah. late than never. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Even but off curve, we had... A, yeah. Even off curve, it's fine. You don't mind taking a little bit of time with this deck. If Warrior didn't have two mana fireworks, they'd probably just play King's Defender. In a lot of Warrior decks. Like, I play uh, Eaglehorn both, no secrets, and I'm happy about it. Three mana, three two weapons are good. Two mana, three two weapons are ridiculous. Well. I mean, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah okay, you probably would if there was no War X. In 800, though, it's a lot more appealing because, you know. They use the face damage better. Exactly. Yeah. There's more like three mana, six damage, you don't have any. Sure. Diminishing returns with other weapons. Mm -hmm. And uh, from my experience playing this matchup, it seems quite close. Um, it's uh, the Worgen combo is like it's not that important to hit all of your pieces because Druid doesn't have a lot of life. They don't, uh, they don't have dirty. a lot of life. It usually comes down to the Druid having a taunt that sticks. A taunt that sticks exactly. You know, Ancient of War. You know, that's you kind of have to save execute for Ancient of War. Right. So the matchup might depend quite a lit on depend quite a lot on how exactly the Druid list is built, how many taunts you have in there. If you have two Druid of the Claw and two Ancient of War somehow, then maybe it's a pretty good matchup for a you. A lot of people are suggesting Sogoth the Slither as the ultimate tech card against this combo warrior deck. Whew. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the Worgen never goes above five health, right? It starts at three, you damage it down to two, and then you battle, you uh, rampage it up to five. So it can't trade into yeah. Sogoth and survive. Unless you're life coaching, you play double rampage. Ooh. Yeah, that's maybe that's the next level. Yeah. When start people t start taking in double Sogoth or single Sogoth, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> you start taking in the double rampage. Or you just jam the Black Knight in there. So shield block armor up seems like a fine turn. Emperor. So we already have Raging Worgen, Charge, and Taskmaster. So we already have a combo for lethal, and we have an execute. It looks like Lothar is in a really strong yeah. position to win and, this game. And Hoy has no pressure and one big nothing. slow taunt that gets executed very hard. Well, we could gain eight. Like, we're not close to killing the guy. Maybe we can make it much harder for him to combo kill us. Yeah, the gaining is really not that powerful. Then it also changes Lothar's game plan, like him knowing that you gain eight. Like, he can plan ahead with his Emperor then and like know that he needs this much damage. Right. Uh, next turn you have to taunt up, so the next chance you'd get to... Well, you can't... If you play the Emperor, you can't, you can't even taunt up. Oh, him. yeah. Um, and he's probably playing the Emperor here. It's, like, too good. The Pyromancer Battle Rage plays make more sense when Druid has some minions to AoE or if you have a Commanding Shout to get more value out of it. And also, just, like... The Emperor is so good. We already have a lot of good combo pieces. Uh, we have Worgen, Charge, Taskmaster, and Execute. Yeah, I mean the the thing is, uh, you would reduce the Worgen and the Charge to four mana. Mm -hmm. You get you draw the Faceless, which is unreduced, costs five mana, and you'd be able to Taskmaster and Inner Rage, uh, and that's I mean that's all you'd be able to do. But that's enough to beat Druid. That you don't you know it's not Cthulhu where you don't need the full sixty. Right, and just playing the Emperor on a on a 
empty board is very powerful than Druid because exactly. Druid suffers against these big things. And there's just exact development of the Ancient of War. I mean, now, we know, we know he that has Mulch, which is the best answer, right? I mean, we know that he passed last turn, so it's very likely that he has an answer, but it's also likely that it's he not perhaps as wanted as to play something this turn that he just is not, not able like to. Like a 5-10, specifically. Yeah. Although, I would say, as Lothar, I'm, I'm kind of happy to see that 5-10, just because I know I can get full value out of my execute you sure. know, at my convenience. And you also get to... I mean, looking at his hand, he's going to want to cycle cards, and you know... you. You use Pyromaster for that, and you can just get the Execute for free. You don't even need to, like, spend any, like, cards into uh, damaging it. So you would so just do it anyway. I think now maybe you gain eight, because now we've seen the Emperor. Now we're, like, much closer to actually dying. We'd like to be able to... Oh, he still doesn't like the gain eight play. Okay, well, I mean... might just be valuing the extra one HP from, from uh, the hero power and just using your Mana Morph from that way, but... Uh, I think gaining is pretty appealing there. Yeah, I would I would tend to agree. Second Battle Rage, but there's no Commanding Shout, which is really a... It's it's something that I had not seen before and really makes a lot of sense. Pyromancer, Commanding Shout, Battle Rage is a really sick turn, and it happens very consistently with this deck. Yeah, but even more so, I mean, just having more than two damage off your Pyromancer against, like, Shaman, for example, is yeah. extremely powerful, just being able to cast as many spells as you want. Yeah, you get more than two damage, and you get to keep a board afterwards. Like, yeah. Pyromancer, can... Commanding Shout, Icker, Battle Rage, it's, like, so gross. Yeah, yeah. Well, he might start War Axing Face to try and get closer to lethal range, which sort of plays into this Feral Rage gain 8, which uh, Hoy's been holding off on against my suggestion. It looks like it might be paying off for him. Wait, am I... Oh, okay, that was the, off the mulch. Okay. <laughs> I was like, why is he playing this? Okay. Oh, yeah. But that's that's, uh, that's an another it. thing to mention. Mulch is particularly... Well, the downside of Mulch giving your opponent a minion is a smaller downside in this matchup than most other matchups because this combo warrior does such a poor job of using random minions because random minions just don't fit the game plan. Right. You're not trying to get ahead on board and kill them with minions. You're trying to set up this kill from hand. The the opponent generally has an abundance of removal in their hand because you just don't have that many threats to right. play. Um, however, this card, I mean, it's quite interesting. This right? particular it's, card might, this might really card. change things. Yeah, Arc V for Fun, that's something. Mulch is... Uh, it's an exciting one. It, it does weird things to games, which creates, you know, unique scenarios where you have to figure out problems you've never seen before. It is quite, which the, is quite the problem, yeah. It's a nice way of saying... He uses the mulch, you know, thinking that that's the only big threat, but now there's... <laughs> now there's another one. <laughs> there's seven, eight, and a... Maybe that's a why you need the second three. mulch to oh, deal wait. with the first mulch. No, no, it costs ten mana, right? The, the buff ten. Yeah. Okay, so that, that's that's not possible. Like, the no. the absolute dream of... Unless he... My first thought is you're just uh, taking the board full of mummies since Druid tends to struggle against right, yeah, yeah. that. That would be like a sick combo, though. <laughs> so, what? Like War Giant Charge Rampage. plus 10 plus 10. Yeah. yeah, a little bit of optimism no, there. <laughs> so we can draw a lot of cards with uh, Pyromancer, Battle Rage type stuff. Um, the thing is our hand's already big and we're not killing any of the Druid stuff, so it's it's not as efficient as I might like. So it's really a, a difficult spot for Lothar, and this this happens a lot. You, you you get put to the test frequently with this deck. You have all these cards in hand; they're so cheap. There's a million different ways you could play or not play them. I think finding the against, optimal line as it, against something like Cthulhu, I would go for a cycle here. But because the Pyromancer effects are so good against Druid, I think I would just hold off because I mean, Violet Teacher. He's really not putting any pressure on you right now. Like you mm -hmm. don't mind just um, you know just taking your time a little bit. That's exactly what this deck wants to do. You know, the more time you're given, just the higher chance that you just win right. right although the druid does sort of pressure you in a not kill you sort of way but in a draw into enough taunts that you can't answer them kind of way okay so just because you're at 600 life doesn't mean you're not going to die to fatigue once he plays a taunt you can't get sure uh, usually though the way you win with taunts is if they're forced to use an execute early right um, and this is on, not the on, case a, on a non-taunt but this is not the case because hoy doesn't have any pressure so lost can save all his executes for i don't even know if hoy plays two ancient war if he just plays one then you know you know that's just not a game plan at all so here, Hoy has 9 mana, he slams Anixia, expects it all to die, but, you know, hopefully you get an execute out of the way so your taunts might stick. Mm -hmm. Has he already used his uh, Fandral this game? Um, I don't think so. Okay, so that Raven Idol could potentially get much stronger if he draws into Fandral. Swipe is sort of okay against this deck because of those Pyromancer commanding shout turns. 
the warrior will often leave himself with a bunch of one health right, minions. Right. Playing the next day, I have to say, would play quite well around exactly Arch Thief or Farm of Mulch. <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> Maybe Hoy's not quite that good. He's not thinking about that. <laughs> not quite that good. I'm, I'm pretty surprised to see him not just slam Anixia. Um, not like Anixia is going to win you the game, but it's like it's never getting better than this, and you just, just make him deal with it, is, is the way I see it. Right. And like that Raven Idol for Savage Roar, Savage Roar is powerful, but it's not Perhaps necessarily was... like sometimes you can Raven Idol for a minion in this matchup to try and find an extra taunt. It could be that he's looking for some specific spell with the Raven Idol. I don't know exactly what that would be. Another gain eight. They get better in multiples. Uh huh. Um, I don't know. That's a really weird turn to me. I'd like to ask him about that if we remember. Why not an Ixion 9 against the Combo Warrior? I mean, yeah, the, it's. Very unlikely that he wouldn't have an answer for Nyxia, but... I think it gets the answer for sure, but it, you make him do it. Exactly. Like, if you can get him to execute that 8-8, then it's great. It's more about the 8-8 than it is about the 1-1s. The 1-1s are, like, so dead in this yeah, matchup. Yeah, yeah. And, and speaking of those 1-1s being dead, that's an argument that Savage Roar is not as strong as you might hope, right? It's like, you're very unlikely to actually stick any sort of swarmy board. Yeah. So you need, like, Lothab for... Well, with the Pyromancer committed to the board... He does kind of have to make a play He doesn't here. actually have any Ravaging Ghouls or Pyromancers to deal with a future Anixia. Mm. Could potentially be overdrawn by this playing this Acolyte, so it's well, risky to play it, right? Sure, but he already he has, the, he has yeah, the he most has important pieces. pieces. So if it gets overdrawn, it doesn't matter. It's sort of a bait, right? I'm, I'm a little bit invest time and resources into yeah. making Lothar overdraw when Lothar doesn't actually care that much. I'm a little bit surprised to not just see the other side of cards. I mean... If he draws faces, he wins the game, right? So, I mean, just playing Battle Rage, just playing Commanding Shout, I don't really you mind it that much. You cycle for that win, yeah. I mean, he just used a Warwick charge to kill two, and when he had so many good spells to play in hand. And it's not like he has the second Pyre Master for the Commanding Shout, either. Oh. So Hoy is actually going for the... I mean, he's he notices that he's in a, quite a bad spot this game, right? You know, he's, he doesn't have any, like, way of closing at the game anytime soon, so perhaps he's going for this... You know, this line of, I mean, this combo deck is very, very dependent on a lot of one-ofs. Unfortunately, both the Worgen and the Charge are in his hand, but perhaps the Faceless could mean that with the Feral Wage, he doesn't have enough damage to actually kill <gasps> Hoy. Execute is a big overdraw. That yeah. changes the game plan. I, I do think that Faceless is the one that could actually swing this game if he burns Faceless. Mm -hmm. I think um, uh, Hoy kind of has a different vision for how to win this matchup than I do. He seems to be much more focused on actually killing Lothar, and I'm more focused on just taunting up and surviving. Oh, right? like the, you, oh we did get wow. burned. Those were maybe the two best cards to burn. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was insane. Lothar is limited now to 30 damage, but, I mean, he does have the Arch Thief from him. Okay, but um, if he draws Rampage, it would be, the Worgen would be total 30 damage with double inner rage charge Taskmaster. Like, Rampage would go to... Um, 15, 15 damage, right? Well, it starts at 3, charge up to 5, enrage up to 8, enrage up to 10, Taskmaster up to 12, range up to 15. Yeah. I mean, you have to say that there isn't an answer for the Arch Thief for Fum, and it seems like a really good turn to play it right now. Oh, yeah, because there's an empty board, and it's a big, dumb threat. Seems good. You play it. The one, there's not an answer, but there's also not an answer for the Now, the mummies. it is you overdraw, right? The mummies. Because you have 10 cards, and you draw a card sure. off it? The relevant card being, like, second Pyromaster, maybe Rampage. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, I think that's that, another I mean, interesting thing about um, playing this Worgen Warrior is a lot of times you just have to hand dump. You have to just, like, play nonsense to get it out of your hand so you can cycle through your deck faster. Right. It's kind of like hand lock in that regard. You just have such a big hand and you want to keep that's going. That's why, looking back on that turn where he, like, Warraxed the 2-1 because he didn't want to play a spell out of his hand, it didn't make that much sense to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd rather have an inner rage. I actually have, like, a, a little bit card. of reservation. I'm not exactly, like, in the zone right now, you know. Yeah, it's... I didn't sleep that well and stuff, so don't, like, take any of my criticisms for granted. I could not be seeing something. Yeah, I mean, I think it kind of goes without saying that when you're casting, you're going to make more mistakes than the players. Because right, there's, there's so much you're thinking about. On. You're seeing both sides and everything. Just... And he... He did use the mulch, right? So unless he wins a second... Oh, is Yogg-Saron like the way you win this game? Yogg away those mummies? No, I mean you can get like Ice Blocker. Some... 
stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that's an excellent point. Yogg's a very good card against Worgen Warrior because Yogg often casts secrets, and secrets often mess up the Worgen Repentance. combo. I've lost Repentance, it. for example. Repentance, Vaporize, Ice Block. Right. Um, what other ones are there? Uh, freezing Trap. Yeah, yeah. Snipe. Yeah. Uh, Snipe is more beatable than the other ones. Yeah, you can play but around But you can, it, like, guess. protect a Freezing Trap pretty effectively or a Vaporize or whatever. It's really mm -hmm. tough. It's actually really tough to beat that. And similarly, um, Cabalist Tome out of Temple Mage can win some games. Right. Just getting random secrets to win. And he did actually pick the the mummies, right? Yeah. That's a very unfortunate overdraft. He does I mean, have Ravaging Ghoul, so he's okay. Yeah. But now perhaps... I mean, yeah, you probably just play this, this mummies, but... Um, now he doesn't have to hold on to like the commanding shot and stuff any longer, because there's no more pyromancers. Well, if he's playing mummies and going face, is he just going to die? Because there's two Savage Rose in the opponent's hand. Each Savage Rose right. is dealing 8 damage, so that's, what, 16... Plus the other six, twenty-two. Well, I should know that there's a Raven Idol card in his hand that hasn't played yet, mm -hmm. but you know it could be Wisps of the Old Gods. It could be. No, I guess it maybe. I mean, yeah, he picked the Savage Roar, right, and he has double Savage Roar. I don't think he's quite dead. Oh, he's actually exactly dead, right? He's exactly it's one dead. over, I think. If he goes face, yeah, which is quite tempting actually. Yeah, as this deck, it is quite tempting to go face. It is, as we so say, that's one of the, ways the that place. He could actually win this game. Lothar knows that the Faceless is burned. Gotta kill a 1-1. Oh. One, one. Okay. Okay. But uh, Hoya's outs now. So it's 5 plus 12 is 17. We need 3. Uh, we don't have mana for all of that, do we? Did he need 3 12. without the hero power? That was with the hero power. So I think we're um, 1 damage off right now. If my math was correct, which, you know, cast your math 50-50. Yeah, like, yeah, no, you're right. It's one of it's, He has 19 damage. So, I mean, it, yeah. That's incredible. It's time to time to praise, I guess. Well, you can play some spells before you praise. Or is there some other? Oh, I mean, wait, he has a Drake's. There's eight cards in the deck, so you may not want to play spells before praising because you might end up uh, overdrawing too much by, by playing so many spells off of Yogg. Ah. Uh. I, w I mean, I don't think overdraw is really the big consideration. I just want to increase the chance that it clears the board, increase the chance of getting these secrets that we talked about, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, when you're at 35, you're not really going to die to fatigue very quickly. If you take a little fatigue damage, it's fine. You're about to win the game if you can just not I mean, die. I, I don't think getting fatigued by the Worgen Warrior with half its deck being card draw is really the big issue. Right. That right, flame strike's a good one here. Hex. Sure. Taunt. Know, it's Hex a good thing. Oh, yeah. It's an upgrade. It's not super relevant, but... Oh, there's the ice block. Oh, did we see what secret with us? Yeah, I saw an ice block. It's actually an ice block. Charging a frozen minion, sure. Uh. Oh, my God. Oh. What? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I thought it picked itself. <laughs> okay, so that's quite, uh, quite the yog, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's good enough. We've seen better. We've seen worse. So he actually got Ice Block off the Yogg, and that's, yeah, the as one we secret. said, that's the, that's the one, right? Um, five turns away from fatigue damage. Sometimes you can, you know, pop him at one or put him down to one and let him die to fatigue without popping him. But that's very difficult to do. Especially with, with this kind Morgan of... Morgan Warrior does damage in large amounts. You, don't you really need to get do quite a lot of math to figure that one out, you know, plan ahead and stuff. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting puzzle. So I think as Lothar, I feel a little bit silly that um, I've kind of had all these options to draw cards for all these turns, and I've just been wasting my mana instead. It seems like he could have cycled through his deck faster and try and figure out a way to win. Yeah, I, I mean, I think, I mean, because of the Arch Thief, he just kind of had like two turns. We just had to, you know, spend all of his mana on that. But I do think that one, uh, yeah, I said this before, but the turn earlier with the Pyromancer, perhaps, instead of swinging with your War X and, and you know, playing an Acolyte, like, maybe just So here we're finally Bio Rage. doing some hand dump kind of stuff, just put things in play to get him out of my hand so I can... And also you have to say that playing the Echo actually made him overdraw the faceless, which is one of the ways he lost this game. Right. Well, growth might not be the most relevant draw here. So I think the goal is to survive, and with that in mind... Well, he actually just doesn't have much to... Yeah, this play kind of sucks. To do Where's here, the removal? Right? 
he could just be well uh, yeah because of the ice bulk he does he is alive right he's alive for the turn but you know if his board gets cleared and he yeah it's it, it is quite difficult to both clear the board and go for the full combo but i mean i guess because of, there's no faceless we've seen two pyromancers and two ravage eagles maybe it's time for anixia is that right i think it's right i mean i'm definitely sure of the pyramus so I, yeah I, I feel like i've seen both ravage eagles okay I'll take your word for that one. That's Twin Emperor. Well, he had a taunt. It's not the most efficient taunt, but it does say taunt. Wow. He does cover the Nourish. I wonder exactly what he's looking for here, and he's actually in fatigue now. He apparently did not have a specific yeah. idea of what he was looking for, because those were not relevant. Those are just a panic Those nourish. are just bad. Hoy, we can see on the cam, he's not exactly happy with, yeah. with that either. Yeah. Feels bad. Well, I can you know, have in tournaments it's, when you just... You know, you start overthinking and you don't exactly know what you have in your deck. Perhaps you thought that you had you know, a Wrath or something like that. You know, he had a plan and then uh, Arc Thief or Fom showed up and everything kind of goes to chaos, right? I, it should be that Lothar has a way of, of doing this to, to put into one because with so many different combinations of damage. I, he has to kind of pl plan ahead here a little bit. You don't even have to put him to one. It's nice if you do, but um, even if you put him to like two or three, you could probably win over two turns. Or no, it's no, not, no, he, not he, could sure. be, he would be He's done on the backswing, right? He has double surge. Okay, so right now we he, can he hasn't do... Test, he hasn't attacked face, so he could, it could be Ice Bear, it could be Vaporize, so I, I would probably attack with... Oh, this with... is extremely complicated. You're thinking Loot Hoarder first to see Maybe what happens? Maybe attack with the Arch Thief because you have lethal no matter what, but... Like, even if it's Ice Bear, you'd probably kill him. Oh, if that were Vaporize. Okay, no, no, yeah, he's got this. That's, that's game over, The Lothar wins. That's game over. So we're going to be going to game five. Oh. And I, I wanted to mention this earlier, actually, because... Hoy's last deck, I would oh, had very he much so Barrier guess. Barrier and Vaporize earlier with uh, an attack from Rafam. He did? Okay. I think, I think Rafam connected the previous turn, is that right? Okay, yeah, I'm just kind of spacing out with all this. There was a lot of stuff going on. Definitely. Yeah, that was, a, like that was an insane game. There were so many <laughs> complications. Um, yeah, but the, the arena lock is generally not very good against this, this deck. Uh, it has a few taunts that might survive. It just doesn't have very much pressure, and it doesn't have a lot of taunts. So it's like you're not going to kill him before he cycles through his deck, and you're not going to be able to survive his offense, so it, it's a struggle. I mean, you run one Sunfria, one Argus, and, like... You have the turn four Mountain Giant? Sure. That's that, a good way you know, to do it. There are ways to bait out Execute, like Twilight Drake and Mountain Giant. So Big Game Hunter's the worst. Twisting Nether's but even worse. Karen is pressure, but it's slow. M Gang Boss is low pressure, but it's you're on the coin. I probably keep the M Gang Boss because you need to play something in the first three turns because of hand size. Yeah. You can't turn two tap, turn three tap. M Gang Boss is generally not that good against like this sort of a deck that just doesn't have like minions it plays itself. And, it's you know, kind of good because they sometimes want to play like Ravaging Glory Pyromancer. I don't know. It's it's just a thing I can play in the first three turns. Yeah, I mean, if anything, like one of the cards is backline, and that's just a downside for you. But, but you could just throw it back, assume you'll hit something to play in the first three turns, you'll figure it yeah, out. Yeah, that's, and you're that's to what look, I was going for. Like you could you're looking back. for the high pressure. You want that mountain giant. That's the real Hope key to win. Hope that you hit one of the big ones. Twilight Drake's second best. Yeah. Mountain Giant's a lot. It's a big, num big number compared to four. Twilight Drake, you might be able to just face tank four for a while. Whereas but Mountain I, Giant has to eat and execute. And I then... think that there's just no way for Hoi to beat the combo in this matchup. I think he has to out-pressure Lothar. He has to actually just kill him before he assembles the combo. I like Tempo War X for sure. I mean, it's almost a bad thing with Battle Rage in hand. I mean, it's not a bad thing. But yes. I mean, yeah, it's more Tempo of a, War X. Is kind you want to spend the mana. Like, yeah. You're not really, like, Eating making life. Reno, yeah. you know, make some... He's not really going to, like, change his play that much just knowing that you have an X. Yeah. Ooze would, ooze would be, like, the one thing, I guess. And it's a risky take. When you know they have Ooze in the list, you still just jam it on two and hope. So, M King Boss looks a little bit silly against that Acolyte of Pain. We could coin Twilight Drake instead, try and avoid giving him multiple draws. Probably makes sense. Is Hoy actually running... Is it just a Karen or no? He's running Nizoth and Drexus. Yeah. Which generally, I mean, I would say that's like one of the worst versions versus this list. Yeah. I mean, um, the uh, Drexus is pretty useless in this I mean, the, the combo would help out close the game earlier, for example. Right. Combo seems to have. Oh wow, two executes in a row. This uh, everything's going according to plan here for Lothar. Absolutely. And you do the uh, second. There's some well. consideration to rampaging the Ackle. No, 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 I definitely should. You'd want to save that for the for the Worgen. 
I mean, you don't need that much damage. There's a lot of other cards that'll right. No, no, get you, you, don't, you, don't, you absolutely don't don't need that much damage. But because there's so many one ofs, you could perhaps get away with not even having the faceless in your combo mm -hmm. if you save the rampage. Oh, it's very nice if you can not need the faceless because then you also don't need an emperor, yeah. and then actually you know, your lethal is much more disguised. You have war axe. Yeah. So perhaps you just you know you can miss out on a taskmaster and maybe you know one of the other cards and and the faceless even, and then you could still just get lethal. Him. Or at least make him play awkward to play around it. So I like keeping the Rampage a lot. Ecker is nice with Execute or our Acolyte or maybe our Battle Rage if we find a Pyromancer. Yeah, I wouldn't play that here. I mean, no, no, no. You, have the you don't play it this turn. I'm just saying it's yeah, like yeah, a no, card. Yeah, no, I, I, saw, I just saw him hovering, hovering over it thinking about it. Okay. Oh, there's news. Full value. Tapu's seems pretty tempting. I don't think yep. I could pass on that. Um, I mean, if you. Yeah, the. Playing the Torn, you know, he's just going to attack it, so it just decrease the value of it. I mean, it's not like he's playing Gorehal. The Ooze doesn't get any better than this. Yeah, no, no. And Fireworks is a good answer to Acidic Swamp Ooze. Funny how that works. Hmm. I'm actually not entirely sure. About this Acolyte? Because you're thinking about maybe you want to save it to... I was uh, actually thinking about not even playing the Warx. You're just playing Acolyte, Bloodseeker. I mean, like, sure okay. you can... Like, you know, you really don't mind, like, him having just a 3-2 on board. And even if he value trades, like, your entire deck just kills it. I like Lothar's play. Um, it kind of is a little bit reckless with the card draw, but I think you can often get away with that in this deck. This deck just has so much cycle. Um, if they Hellfire your Acolyte of Bane, you're probably still going to draw into more card draw, and it'll work out okay. Yeah, I have to say that, you know, this deck has a lot of card draw, so perhaps you don't have to value. I was just looking at this specific hand, and it felt like, mm -hmm. you know, perhaps being a little bit greedy with the Acolyte. I like Emperor there. I was just going to play Emperor, Emperor on an empty board. Um, I, I feel like I don't care about getting a massive combo discount. It just helps me cycle through my deck quickly. Um, and it's a 5-5 five five that he has to deal with from an empty hand. Right. It's more about the, you know, the same thing as against Druid. Like, one, he needs to even have an answer in the first place, or you just snowball like, completely out of control. Um, but then also, you know, we hinder his development. For example, here we saw him play the Emperor. So this is a great turn for Lothar. He can do something along the lines of Pyro, Commanding Shout, Icker, War Axe Swing, and Battle Rage. And not exactly that order. It's uh, <laughs> Pyro, Commanding Shout, Icker, Battle Rage, then War Axe Swing. Right. So he's drawing three off of the Battle Rage, one off the Commanding Shout, the Icker's spawning a 2 1, he's dealing with the Emperor. It's just beautiful. Cycling through his deck to find some more combo pieces for a, a better um, Emperor hand. Absolutely. This is exactly what Lothar wants. And it also, I mean, looking at Hoist Hand is not that big of an issue, but, you know, posing some sort of threat on the board is always a, a kind of a big deal, you know. Him not being able to play like a Ragnaros and sort of start pressuring. Right. Um, we could have Inraged instead. Um, we could have Inraged one of our guys instead, right? Like, plus two attack, proc Pyromancer doesn't kill our guy. Instead of hitting with the War Axe? Yeah. Um, so the Inrage adds four damage to the combo, whereas War Axe is only three damage to the combo, but... I mean, if he draws you both... You have the option to fire a War Axe. I mean, it's, it's kind of close okay, in so my if eyes. if he draws both the Worgen and the Charge, um... With, oh, with and, the faceless, and, and it's more than one damage. Yeah, with, without the faceless, he would um, he lose four damage per inner rage, right? He doesn't have a taskmaster either, so he would lose. He would have twenty-two damage if he used the inner rage and didn't draw taskmaster. It's mainly a question of do you value the inner rage in hand higher or the one war axe charge in play higher? And I could definitely see the inner rage in hand being better. Although, yeah, I was leaning towards the same thing. Um, if you save the War Axe charge, you have a smaller hand size, which gives you a little bit more flexibility. Right, but he also used both Battle Ages, for example. He played both Acolytes, right, as well? Yeah, so it's just not that important anymore. Okay. Um, if he, he still cannot play the Emperor if he wants to go for the Faceless combo. Like, he hasn't drawn any, actually, of the, the three core pieces. But he might just play it because he's happy enough. He's happy enough with just the Worgen, but I mean, looking at this game, like, I might be a little bit scared to, to go for that, right? He yeah. didn't. He didn't use a Taskmaster, right? Or no, we've not. Right, so he does have the full used. thirty. If he if he just ditches the faceless completely, yes, full thirty. 
with double inner reach rampage charge taskmaster it's getting a little bit tense for lothar he's he has to draw all of the combo pieces and he's used all of the multiple draw cards but he does have a fair amount of cycle and only 10 cards left in his deck right and, and i mean another thing is that you know, the longer the game is, the you know he's gonna start emptying his hand from Pyromancer and commanding shots, stuff like that. And it can actually be difficult to activate, execute sometimes to like both do the Warden combo and kill Spawn at the same time. It can be quite difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh I my guess. God. Oh my God! There it is. So I got the Slither. Dude. How do we get through it? We can't execute it. What the, All what the is fiery he doing? War X charges are gone. What's he doing? He actually just has it then in his deck. Yeah, he's Sogoth and Jaraxxus, and we have to believe and in his off. off. There's 100% yeah, in his off in there. He, I, I believe I said his curve is nine nine ten. I'm pretty sure I saw him draw a villager from his deck as well. So I, I yeah, think he just runs it. And he has infested the torn. Like it's not a secret. Is Hoy just like a genius? I mean, so he's not playing Ragnaros, right? Which I like. I, I mean, don't. Could be. I mean, it's Reno Lock. Like you can cut like, so many different things. I think that's the card he's getting rid of. Yeah. You, yeah. I guess you. Yeah. Probably no rag. Like you can only play so many nine and ten drops with your yeah. with your Ragnaros. Um, I mean, this changes the the dynamic of this matchup a lot. Yeah, like a lot, a lot. All of a sudden, feels good for Hoy. And you have to mention that Lothar still doesn't have any. He doesn't have Worgen or Charge. Yeah, or Faceless. Faceless is so the way to deal with Sogoth is Pyromancer Warax. Or minions that you already have on board. The like war axes are both Emperor. gone. Both war axes are gone. Mainly, it's going to be faceless, I think. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He, you can use. Yeah. You're going to have to have a lethal worgen and faceless hit, and the faceless right. goes into the saga. But he used both power so you can't draw that many cards now, and he needs to emperor on all the cards. Um, yeah. I mean, that saga that card is absolutely the difference between um, why winning and losing. Okay, this if you skip the taskmaster, you can. You only need to draw like one more combo piece, and then you can do, play the emperor. What? Uh, like, if you draw the Worgen or the Faces, then you can play the Emperor. Um, but yeah, I mean, that is... Yeah, I didn't account for that at all, actually, in this matchup. And Sogoth... Yeah, I mean, I said it before, right? Like, Sogoth is yeah the nuts against this Worgen deck. That's what I was saying when this Worgen deck was, uh, you know, starting to come up. Like, it's very counterable, you know. Ice Block, for example, mm -hmm. just beats it. Um, just any know, secret. Maybe some sort of mill deck like Cold Eye Oracle, you know. Like, just them overdrawing one card, they just, you know, they just lose pretty right. much. Like, Worgen or Charge can't win the game. It's like very powerful when you have no idea it what feels, you're up it against. It feels very fragile, but very it, fragile. it has, has a really good spot in this meta. So um, maybe War Axe is better than Inner Rage when we're looking at Infested Torrin. No. Right, yeah. We're probably going to find a way to Pyromancy that Infested Torrin down. And he's... We're going to set it up. Saving the Pyromancy and Commanding Shot, wow, which this feels so should bad. help him win This late game. in the game, this full of a hand, and we're floating five mana. And there could perhaps be something interesting off the Banner Doom as well, right? Uh, Are there Feldard. any guards? Oh, yeah. Void caller, void uh, the one three ton guy. Sure, You'd think I would sure. know that thing's name, but void. I mean, it kind of dies to the pyromancer, but yeah, it's maybe relevant. It's an extra bit of hassle. Yeah, so and that's another thing that makes this deck, deck this deck fragile is like it has two executes, so it just can't beat like more than two big taunts. Like, there's very very few ways of of dealing with like big health minions. Yep, I've definitely considered and, uh, attacking in a brawl just so that like it won't be expected because the list is kind of known at this point. Mm -hmm. And it yeah, does, yeah. As soon as it's not expected, having a brawl is pretty good in a deck that has no board yeah. presence. It's just like dependent on the meta. I mean, right now, like Pyromancer commanding shadows is just good kind enough to deal with everything, things, like yeah. Shaman and Zoo and everything. You're just happy with that, so you don't Ooh, need the brawl. But what if, if people yeah. start showing up with Taunt Druid exactly. and Taunt as Shaman? As soon as people, we have seen some of that this tournament, right? Like Frodan people... six owed his group with uh, <laughs> with yeah, no, no, I, I'm aware. I'm aware of that. There's the faceless. That's a key piece. So we're dismissing the Raging Worgen. Uh, we can Emperor already, you were saying? Yes. Um, the no Charge Faceless would go... Yeah, Charge Faceless Rampage uh, would go from 10 mana to 7 mana. And then if he draws the Worgen, he can play the Inner Rage and everything. All right, so it looks like a good Shield Block Emperor turn. Although maybe maybe it's some kind of Pyromancer turn instead. Uh, I would... Pyromancer Commanding Shout Shield Block... It's, it's I don't like a it little bit. Wait, why? Is it not a little bit interesting that Hoy didn't play the Sogoth? Or I guess he's just waiting for after Emperor is played because not, right now he's still not threatened at all. So he wants to play it once he's you know 
wants when he, once he wants to play the combo at the last moment. Give him minimum time to plan and exactly and figure it out, and also sort of put him to as li as low life as possible before, so he has you know, less time in that sense as well. Okay. So only six cards in his deck, so Lothar has a pretty good idea of what he's drawing to. It's an important card, although not one that he's playing this turn. And he really wants to find a third spell to play, such as Blood to Icker, so yeah. that he can deal with that taunt. Can play it on the Sylvanas. Yep. Hello. Yeah, I guess. There's some argument for not playing it on the oh, Sylvanas. What? Oh. Interesting. That is we could have enraged the 2-2 instead. I mean, they also also say that if it steals the Paramount, then the whirlwind effect just doesn't go off. Yeah. And you're also using one of your combo pieces. I mean, like, how much was that Sylvanas doing on the board? Like, the board was already challenged, right? I mean, if you're if you're looking at this spot, it's like kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. Assuming it doesn't remove it, but, you know. Yeah, that not... enrage might not have been correct. So, as Hoy, are we feeling like it's Sogoth time? Well, I, I mean, I guess the Enrage, maybe the Enrage is just not valuable at all. In, in the... I think Hoy's doing the math on... Well, it is valuable, right? Because he could actually just kill him next turn without the Faceless, without Emperor even. Right. It's it's So it's significant uh, from sorry, Hoy's perspective that that Enrage is used. There's no longer that 30 potential. You'd have 26 damage if right. you save the so, Enrage. So if you Farsi or Bane into him, you're out of range. You don't need to Sogoth, is what he's thinking. Well, if you save the Enrage, now he only has 22. Oh, okay. But if you save the inner age, like, I mean, you don't know what is in Hoy's hand, right? He could just not have, well, Soga <laughs> Slither. Yeah, I mean, you can't argue with this play. It's, it's... So now it's like, uh, Lothar's your... looking at Hoy. Uh, Where's your Black Knight now? He's like, really? I keep seeing and, Lothar look and up. And because his answer is the faceless, uh, his answer to, to even kill this is the faceless. Because, I mean, I said, yeah, I said he only has 22 damage because the it can't attack twice. Like, it can't kill the Sogoth and hit face. Mm. So he does only have 22 damage and for that. And Hoy can even, like, Farseer his face to 28, PO it, Shadow Flame killed, like, the only remaining threat, really. And, like,. Well, maybe that's a little bit too much, because then you might actually lose to just the Worgen, right? Like, <laughs> it's kind of awesome. It shows the importance of deck building and getting every single card right. Just absolutely. this, this one card slot in Hoy's deck, this Sogoth the Slither, that is absolutely an, the difference between winning and losing this match. That is an insane tech card, honestly. It's solid against Shaman. It's it's a bit slow against Zoo and Shaman, but like kind of powerful. It's kind of just a... It's better than Ragnaros, right? If that's what it's replacing. It's just better against Zoo and Shaman and this Worgen Warrior. It's just worse against some kind of like control warrior, maybe, where it's not as much pressure oh, and card I mean, advantage. It's as a lot worse than some matchups like Freeze Rogue. Mage, for example. Oh, wait, against Rogue, it's really good too, right? No, no, Sogoth's nuts against Rogue. Oh, maybe it's not that nuts. I don't, I don't exactly know. Rag's also pretty good. Well, I can't sap it, so it's not bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in terms of but if you, you just put if you keep clearing it. their board and you just have a Sogoth, like they can't do anything. But Rogue has quite a bit of board in general, like, even against Reno Lock. So they can just trade some dudes into it and keep going? Yeah, and I mean, the rag is like, you know, you can kill a Concealed Auctioneer and stuff like that. Yeah. And it races them more. Right. Um, but yeah, looking at this game exactly, I mean... It's really nice here. Does Hoi know ex like... At this point, does he use double works, he's double Paramount, so maybe even running the, the Sogoth into the Emperor doesn't really matter that much. Like, maybe he still has to hit it with the Worgen, and he can just heal it up to... To a 5-6. 5-7, sorry. Yeah, I was going to say. Um, you can even talk about the Farseer, here. why not? And now it's looking really difficult. Um, yeah, it, I just, it's looking pretty over. I think Lothar's going to look at his last few cards and get rid of... Get out of here. I just don't know. I mean... I mean, he can actually execute the Farseer, so that's one of the taunts gone, but... And now he actually has 26 damage, I think, with... So he Ravaging will execute the Farseer. And then he goes f for the Worgen charge. That's 5, Inner Rage to, to 8, Taskmaster to 10, 13. Rampage to 13, so it is 26 damage. 
Yeah. So Hui kind of needs to draw something, right? So if Lothar has infinite mana, he wins this turn. Right. 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 He plays all but the he things. Does he Does he have a? Yeah, he has ravaging. He has to ravage and go and execute the farce here. Yeah, and he just sets up to win. He next doesn't turn. have to execute the farce. You can just do it next turn at zero mana. But uh, sure. Yeah, why execute this turn? You're gonna protect your ravaging ghoul from him trading him with the farce here. You're gonna save three life. No, you just I mean, save uh, the execute. Like, I guess you, in some sense, you could say that like Hoy would make every play now to to stay out of out of like the execute range anyway. But right. and you like save three life, kind of. But it, it, really, it really matter. shouldn't matter. Yeah, it shouldn't matter. You also just don't have a way to kill the three two. Oh, that's not yeah, gonna matter. Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. Okay. And that's just game, right? Lothar wins. Yeah. Wow. If he spots it, which it's very I don't hard see how to. You don't. It's very hard to not think of that line, right? Like that is <laughs> play your cards, win the game. It's very hard to not. Think that's incredible. Know. I thought. Uh, I mean, this game is so back and forth in my eyes. Let me just like I, let's hope I don't not like some idiot caster right now. Yeah, right. <laughs> he tries a five inner age. Yeah, it's eight, ten, thirteen. It's, yeah, it's twenty six. Oh my god, what? What? What's happening? Okay, wait. I'm not. I'm just not even gonna like make some faces now because Lothar might realize because he's we're in the same room. Like he might see that I'm making faces or something. I believe he just had it right. Or am I miscounting? No. Oh, I am miscounting. He can't rampage, right? Oh, yeah, you can't rampage. You can't rampage. Okay. So I was the idiot caster. He actually just can't even well, rampage. Well, he didn't have to slam, right? He could have just executed. So he had war. No, no, no. But he, the, look at this. Like, he has... It's four, four, two, two. It already costs 10 mana without the rampage. His, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why... Is he going to play everything? Yeah, he just... Yeah. Okay. That's what I said earlier. Like, he... He could so do he it wouldn't... with... He could do it, but he used the inner rage. That was the problem, right? So... By using the inner rage, he reduced his damage potential to 22 damage, right? Man, I feel bad now. Doing such a bad job casting this game. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. I mean, you, you kind of trusted me on this one. Uh, yeah, I just, like, yeah, he has a Taskmaster now. But yeah. So this was the line. He needed to faceless the Sogoth. You cannot rampage your own Sogoth for a value trade. That's not a thing. Nope. So now what's going on? So How do we handle this? Powerwhelming and... You P.O. Shadow Flame? You could P.O. Shadow Flame the Doomsayer. Or does he want to... Uh, what is the Shadow Flame? No, 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 you can siphon the Doomsayer. Double trade. You can siphon the Doomsayer, I guess. Nah, but then you don't have an answer. Like you just win. You can't lose. Pretty much. Just cannot lose. Man, if he had just it okay, what if he had executed the three two? He would still have No, he can't slam the Sawgoth. Taskmaster to challenge the Sawgoth. Saved Siphon's old answer, the Taskmaster. Oh my god, it's so awkward. Siphon sold that Taskmaster. Game winning plays right here. Yeah, because he picked up the Spellbreaker, he has an answer to the Worgen, which, yeah, it doesn't even matter. He just cannot get through the Sogoth. But he had Twisting Nether for that. Sometimes as well. you can like go for like an empty board Worgen as a win condition. Right. Uh, but yeah, that's going to wrap it up. Wow, and what a match. The Sogoth, the Slither, <laughs> that was wins, incredible. Uh, wins a game against OTK Warrior, which is a really, really sick tech card from Hoya. It's really not that amazing in other matchups, and uh, it's probably an inclusion I would guess he made just because of this metagame. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, they were talking about the game now, you know, getting Ice Block off Yogg and yeah. So Hoy now advanced out of the group, and Lothar still has another chance to advance by beating. Oh so my god, dude, I'm just remembering this Druid game where he just draw three, draws three cards and all the cards are bad. Yeah. And he goes to Fatigue and he just dies, even yeah. though he has Ice Block. Oh my god. This was such a sick match. That's a really, really sick series. So apologies if I casted it poorly. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, casting is hard. Yeah. So Hopefully at least you could just watch the game and judge for yourself, but 
well, it really, really came down to the warrior, uh, to the, you know, the warrior not being able to get through the Sogoth. Like that's right. And there was the one turn where he used Inner Rage. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. On uh, like Sylvanas. The Sylvanas. Like, I don't a little really bit, see what the threat like of a role uh, play, like a panic role play. I don't really see what the threat of the Sylvanas is against this deck. Like, what's he going to do? You know? Yeah. Steal my. Random idiot, no one cares. Still my minions that I don't even have. Like, the kind of the whole point of the deck is that you don't care about any of your minions. I guess, like, he had the Emperor in hand, right? So Yeah, but you basically you had the win, right? Like twenty six the difference between twenty six and twenty two is a very big deal as we saw in this game, right? Right. Um, okay, so I think that's it for this cast. <laughs> uh thanks for watching guys. We'll be, you know, playing some me music and back in a few